guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Repeat Remake. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. I believe they're having the little, uh, the little, uh, <clears throat> intervention for Sissel, because he lives out in the woods in a broken cabin. Like a homeless person, anyway. Gee, thanks. Speaking of which, how do I s'more this? I have no idea how this works. Oh, you just stick the marshmallow between your chocolate and graham crackers. Like this. Owen demonstrated and wolfed down the resulting treat with a grin. Philip grimaced as bits of graham cracker sprayed into the forest night. Looks like diabetes on a stick. Sugar is bad for you. Listen, buddy, some of us are trying to enjoy what remains of our very short lives. Jenny snorted into her sweets and accidentally inhaled an entire marshmallow. She promptly began breaking down in a fit of laughter and choking. Philip rolled his eyes and elbowed Owen before patting Ginny's back through her choking. Felt like there was an inside joke I wasn't quite getting. It took a moment before Ginny finally caught her breath. Woo! Thanks, Philip. I thought I was going to die there. Philip punched her in the shoulder, electing even more giggles from her. You're all disasters! I feel like we're all going to die early deaths if Sissel doesn't change his mind soon. We're not going to survive more than one night in the woods if one of us gets defeated by a single marshmallow. More than one night? What are you talking about? Isn't it obvious? We're going to camp out here every night until you find a safe place to live. Seriously? That's just stupid. Says the guy living out in the woods. Come on, Sissel. I know guilt tripping is bad, but we're doing this for your own good. We're not resting until we know you're safe. Ah! On a more serious note, I'm kind of curious. Why are you so stubborn about doing things all on your own? Hmm? What do you mean? I mean, why do you feel the need to reject help from others? A bit of pride and self-sufficiency is nice, but this? Philip gestured vaguely towards the dark, cold forest around us. Homelessness. This just isn't healthy. Sissel chewed on his marshmallow quietly, his eyes lost in thought. Hmm. Sissel looked up at all of us with a heavy sigh. Before I answer that, I, uh, have a question for all of you. If you don't mind. Sure, it's only fair we answer back. Um, what's it like having parents? A low, uncomfortable silence hung in the air as we all exchanged looks. We all looked reluctant to answer. There really wasn't a way to explain without sounding awkward. Sissel went back to chewing at his s'more sheepishly, as though he regretted asking. I mean, no, oh, never mind, forget I asked. Philip interrupted by clearing his throat. Well, I guess I'll start, uh, since I was the one who asked. I grew up with a single mom. Uh, Dad died from overworking when I was young. Times were pretty tough and we struggled through a lot, but having Ma with me made it easier. Plus, Ma's probably the sweetest and most hardworking lady in the world. Growing up sucked a little, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. I see. Eh, I grew up with a single mom too. Dad's alive, but he's off doing Lorelei nonsense somewhere. Never met the guy. But my butler was nice enough to fill that empty space. Oh, right, rich boy over here. Owen elbowed Philip in the ribs good-naturedly. Uh, and I also had a sorta not-my-real-uncle. Our household was a mess. Nobody really knew how to be a family, to be honest. But we loved each other anyway. Everyone's gaze suddenly turned to me expectantly. I gulped. I have a mom. And a dad. They're kinda... there. And they kinda don't want me to be here. I shrugged. Not much to say, really. We turned towards Jenny, who was slowly sipping on a bottle of water. She looked a bit uncomfortable. Grant took care of me all my life. Tried to, at least. My mom left me at the hospital when I was still a baby. Didn't want to deal with a difficult child, I guess. I grew up in one room. Didn't go outside much. Y'all know the story. We all turned back towards Sissel. He stuck another stick of marshmallows into the campfire, looking thoughtful. Thanks for telling me, guys. I've always been curious. He stared at his feet for a long while before continuing. I, I was an orphan. The words were spoken as though they were dirty and unfit. Sissel fidgeted uncomfortably as he spoke. Some people from a church found me abandoned as a baby. I was bundled up and tossed out in a garbage dump. Sissel chuckled and poked at the fire bitterly. My own parents didn't even want me. They threw me out like trash. He breathed out a long sigh and shook his head. Why did they not want me? Was I not good enough? You asked why I keep trying to do things on my own. This is why. I just want to prove that I'm worth something, you know? That I'm not just a worthless burden that needs to be taken care of all the time. My chest felt tight with sympathy. I placed a comforting hand on Sissel's shoulder, and he gave me a small smile in return. One second, y'all. Let me drink some water. 
Ah, oh, delicious water. I know it's not healthy to drive myself to homelessness because of this, but it's hard. Every time someone helps me, this painful pit in my stomach just won't go away. Sissel took a deep breath and looked up at all of us with a determined smile. But I'm doing my best to change that. Tomorrow I'm going to move in with Boss. I'll try and rebuild my life from there. I still don't feel very good about it, but it's something I think I need to learn to do. Ooh, excuse me. Jenny beamed and learned and leaned into Sissel for a supportive hug. Aw, it's nice to see you taking care of yourself, sis. Heh. <laughs> Thanks for coming all the way out here for me. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. We're just glad to see you do better. Elsa leaned in for a hug. Sissel's face flashed a slight shade of pink. Anyway, enough of this mushy crap. This is going to be our only night camping here, alright? Let's talk about something less depressing. Aw, oh, great image, yes! Perfect thumbnail material there. This is a pretty heavy night. Are all camping trips this emotional? I think it's just been a hectic day in general. We missed almost the entirety of Visitor's Day. Jenny punched a dude and broke his nose, etc. Huh. That was probably my favorite part of the day. Oh, damn it. Jenny suddenly sat up, eyes wide in realization. We missed the Visitor's Day dance. I was looking forward to seeing you all dressed up and everything. There was a dance? Yeah, it's formal wear only and there was going to be waltzes and real dancing. I had a suit picked out for the occasion, too. <sighs> if that's the case, why don't we hold our little dance right here? The campfire's not the same as Gerania's ballroom, but it's got a nice romantic feel to it. No thanks. I can't dance to save my life. That's a great idea. She sent Sissel a mischievous smirk. I remember how a certain someone was super excited for the dance for the past week. What? Teach, don't! Oh, right. Sissel kept mumbling about asking someone out every morning. That's pretty adorable. I hate all of you! Sizzle's face flushed red as he stabbed the campfire with his stick again. Everyone else leered between him and myself with a knowing grin. Ah, oh, don't be like that, Sizzle. Think of it as a lucky second chance. Aren't you gonna ask him out? A night in the woods is a pretty romantic setting. I'm not prepared for this, but we've got no music. Heh, <laughs> today might be your lucky day. Ah, he's playing guitar! Owen fumbled for his camping back for a moment. For his camping? Oh, camping back from up before pulling out a large guitar. Phillips, this little Adrian. Okay. I brought my trusty guitar with me for tonight. I thought I'd be using it for campfire songs, but helping my buddy Sissel get his date is even better. You're an asshole. Of course I am. Well, are you gonna ask him or not? I, 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 I. Sissel snuck a few nervous glances at me. I must have had a stupid smile on my face as I waited for an explanation. Finally, Sissel relented and turned towards me with his face glowing red. Peer pressure was a beautiful thing. Um, so, Adrian, I was supposed to, uh, um, ask you out to the dance after I won the contest today. But that obviously didn't happen. I mean, this is a lot less impressive without the golden trophy, but if you wanna... I laughed, my chest fluttering with nervous warmth. Sissel gulped as he watched me stand up and dust off my pants. I'd dance with you any day, Sissel, trophy or not. Just warning you, though, I'm infamous for stepping on toes. Are you sure about this? I said yes, didn't I? I offered him a hand with a glowing smile on my face. Sissel peered up at me for several long moments before standing up and taking it. His hand felt very warm against mine. Everyone suddenly erupted into applause and fits of laughter as Sissel and I stood, stood together holding hands. Oh. Everyone suddenly erupted into applause and fits of laughter as Sissel and I stood together holding hands. Our little Sissel is finally growing up. Owen melodramatically wiped a fake tear from his eye. Oh, shut up, dude. Don't ruin this for me. Owen laughed and prepared his guitar while Jenny pressed a hand in, a hand to her mouth to hide her ecstatic grin. Philip just gave us a nonchalant thumbs up. Sissel looked up at me meekly and quietly held his hands out to me in a waltzing position. I, uh, just wanted to say thanks. And, um, I'm not really that good at dancing either, so... I laughed and pressed a finger to his lips before taking his hand. I've got no idea what I'm doing either. We'll figure it out together, though. Thanks! We were standing very close. I could feel the embarrassed warmth radiating off of him as we stood waiting for the music. Hey, Adrian? Yeah? Aw, thanks for sticking with me through all this. I loved every moment of it. <laughs> it's been my pleasure. There were a few off-key twangs of the guitar as Owen tested the notes. Alrighty, how does the song go again? Ah, here we go. This is for you lovebirds. Oh, God, so... Ah, good pictures. Good thumbnails! Oh, God! The two of us began stumbling in rhythm to the first notes of the song. 
We probably looked ridiculous, swaying and toe-stepping our way around the campfire, but we were laughing the whole time. Ginny and Philip clapped encouragingly as we waltzed together into the moon. Cecil and I didn't really notice. We couldn't stop smiling as we shared this little intimate moment under the dark forest night. It was nice to have someone by your side in this unfair world. Aw, God, cute couple. Oh, alright. Day 11. She watches from the water. Hmm, man. Interesting. I was enlightened to a new discovery during our night in the woods. It turned out that camping outside with bug spray was like offering your flesh and blood to the mosquito gods. I scratched it in my bike my, my bike covered arms and groaned as the five of us began groggily packing up our camping supplies. Why did I think going outside would be a good idea? Sissel perked up. Despite his usual grumpy demeanor, he looked quite cheerful this morning. Hey, don't talk smack about the outdoors, dude. I had a great time with you guys. The fresh air is great for the soul. What a coincidence, I don't have one. I glanced at the time on my phone. It was an ungodly hour of 7 a.m. I'm glad most of my classes are in the afternoon today. The lack of motivation lectures I get from teachers are growing old. Out of the corner of my eye, Cecil grimaced bitterly at the mention of school. I instantly clamped my mouth shut. Cecil noticed me staring and scratched his neck awkwardly. So, uh, what's the plan for you guys today? How much do you want to bet that Mrs. Corlise is about to call the cops to report five missing kids? We should probably head back to campus before search parties are sent after us. Oh! Well, I hope you guys have a, have a safe trip back. You didn't actually think we'd leave you alone, did you? We're gonna make damn sure you actually go stay with your boss. The last thing we need is your stubborn ass running off somewhere in shame. I'm not that unreasonable. Adrian, you stay with Sissel and make sure he behaves himself. What? Why me? Philip sighed and pointed somewhere behind me. Jenny was still sound asleep, snoozing like a rock in her sleeping bag. Despite the full night's rest, her face looked strained with exhaustion. Owen and I are going to make sure Ginny gets home safely. She doesn't come out very often, so she's going to need a lot of rest to recover. I can carry her back home, and Philip can convince Mrs. Corlise to not eviscerate us for breaking curfew. Can I carry her instead? Ha! <laughs> no. Ginny mumbled tiredly in her sleep as Owen gently picked her up and hoisted her onto his back before making his way down the forest trail. There was a soft smile on Philip's face as he trailed behind them, camping supplies in tow. The forest was quiet as Sissel and I stood beside the cold campfire, the campfire as they left. So, you ready to head to your boss's place? Sissel wrinkled his nose, clearly still unhappy with the arrangement. It's not like I have much choice. Y'all are gonna keep hassling me till I accept a roof over my head. Everyone's just worried for you, that's all. Alright, y'all, let's, uh, save it, and then I'm gonna take a sip of water. Ugh. Oh god, more than a sip. Oh, it's nice and ice cold, my god. Right. Well, I'm not taking all this from Boss for free. I'll be working my ass off at the cafe to make up for all his help. And I'll pay you guys back for the s'mores sometime, too. Damn, it's not like we're all loan sharks thirsty to collect on a debt. It's just what friends do. Sissel mumbled as he grabbed his small ragged backpack and walked down the forest trail. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. I huffed indignantly and trotted after him. I know that, it's just... I'm tired of being on the receiving end all the time, you know? That can be easily taken out of context. Sizzle snorted and punched my shoulder playfully. You ass! You make it too easy! Sizzle rolled his eyes before dragging me quicker down the forest trail. Come on, let's get going! The two of us snickered stupidly at our own jokes as we made our way back out of the Bradley Woods and back towards the city. Our hands brushed against each other's occasionally as we walked, but Sizzle didn't say anything about it. His face was a light shade pink as he kept walking and nervously avoided eye contact. I was tempted to reach out and gently grasp his hand, like we did last night during our impromptu dance. His hand was very warm and comforting. Mine felt oddly light and empty. Oh god. My hair suddenly stood on end as a ghostly song echoed through the woods. Its soft chords, wa chords washed over me like gentle waves. I spun around and glanced about my surroundings in panic. Adrian? Something wrong? You're acting a bit antsy. No, just, um... I laughed nervously and glanced back towards the lake. I, uh, I just remembered I forgot something back at the campsite. Why don't you go ahead for a bit? I'll catch up with you real quick. Sissel raised a suspicious eyebrow. I can come I can come with you if... I waved my hand dismissively and began walking backwards towards the camp. It's fine. It'll be real quick. I'll see you in a bit. Sissel's face looked uncertain as I backpedaled out of sight and towards the lakeside. There was no way I could explain to him what was happening. Hell, I didn't even know what was happening. The lady in the water... 
I stumbled nervously towards Bradley Lake. The water lapped gently along the shore as I approached. What am I even doing here? Taking a deep breath, I leaned over and peered cautiously into the lake's dark waters. H hello Is anybody there? Only silence followed. I mumbled awkwardly and backed away from the water. This was a stupid idea. I jumped as the wishes' wailing song washed over the forest. Scrambling onto my feet, I peered back into the lake with my heart pounding. There was something in the water. You were watching us from the lake! I knew it! Oh, it's her. A dark figure stared up from beneath the water's surface. A tangled mass of black hair obscured its face and eyes, but it felt as though it was peering into my very being. You can see me. Yes? Ah, yes. I remember now. You're that boy from the other day. The one running from the gunman. Oh, right, that whole incident with Mrs. Mr. Dolores. I never got the chance to thank you for saving us. I saved the little one with the red eyes. He is a friend of Sissel's. He helped Sissel long ago when I could not. I owe him a great debt. Little one, you mean Philip? Yes. When Sissel was still living alone in these woods in the winter time, there was a great snowstorm. He was slowly freezing to death. There was little I could do. The little one with the red eyes came and left my Sissel warm clothing and food while he was asleep. The little one even stoked our, ca our, our cabin's fireplace to keep him warm. Without his kindness, my Sissel would have surely perished. I'm glad to see he has people to call friends. The dark figure tilted her head, peering at me darkly. As for you, I bring to you a warning. You are being followed. There is a wish with malicious intent shadowing you wherever you may go. It strives to bring you and those around you harm and misfortune. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye